So, first of all, thank you for coming to our session because it's the last slot, okay? Uh, we didn't expect so much people <laughs> 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 because it's the last slot, okay? So, thank you for coming and thank you to all the sponsors and thank you to SQL Day for inviting us because it's our very first time in Poland, our very first time in this event, okay? So, we are proud and we are nervous, obviously. Okay, but we need to change to to, English, to Spanish, right? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes. So, you hola, buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Bien, muy bien. Yes, we have people that speak Spanish. Yeah, because so. the, the organizer told us that you all speak Spanish. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this session will be attention contention. Okay, it's obviously we'll, we will talk about TempDB contention. So, uh, I am Juan Moreno. My coworker is Jose Manuel, and let's introduce a little bit ourselves. Okay, we both work uh, in Microsoft as support escalation engineers. In my case, I'm subject matter expert in high availability solutions, and I work in EMEA team for SQL Server Core. Okay, that means that I work on premises and also on Azure Virtual Machines, but mainly on premises. So my name is Jose Manuel Jurado. I am a support escalation engineer. I'm working in the dark side of uh, not on-premise, and the dark side called Azure. Okay, so most probably you could hate, you could like, but it's the dark side, okay? So <clears throat> I'm supporting several databases. Uh, as you could see, MySQL, Mariaba, Progress, Managed Instance, a lot of databases. I have right now, eight, uh, I'm working in Microsoft for eight years right now. So I support SQL Core. I was working with, uh, with my colleague Juan. Long time and ago. Yes, a long time ago. But, but he's very I don't, I don't want to remember these times. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So other activities that we use is to deliver sessions. So for us, as uh, support engineers, it's very, 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 very important to share the, our knowledge with you, the experience, that you could share your experience with us because we are not marketing people, okay? So we know the bad things, the good things, so we are working with you. So for us, it's very, very important, this type of sessions. Yes, because uh, yes, keep in mind that we are support escalation engineers. So that means that each time we talk with you is because you have a problem. So you, you don't start the conversation with, hey, hi, someone else. No, my things are broken. Okay, so it's different to talk in this kind of situation than to talk uh, during the support, okay? So uh, as Jose Manuel said, we will share with you our experience, okay? And our knowledge. Uh, we are not here for selling anything. In fact, when marketing people see this kind of presentation because the organization saved it or whatever, uh, they hate us because we said the bad part of the product. So <laughs> we are not here for selling anything, absolutely anything, okay? So what we will talk during this presentation, as I advance, we will talk about 10 TV contention, and we will try to reproduce it on premises and on Azure. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, stop, stop. You will say that on Azure, Azure you don't have contention. Uh, between you and I. Yeah, okay. they have contention. Okay. It's working well all, every, all the so, time. So come on. <laughs> what we will see uh, when we have TempDB contention, why we have TempDB contention, how to diagnose it, and how to try to avoid it. Okay, so that's the objectives of this session. If you learn about it, we, are, we will be very, very happy. So, we will do a little background check. First of all, please, raise your hand, the ones that are developers. Wow, we have a lot of developers, so we can blame on it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> Who of you are DBAs? Okay, that is very interesting, because if you see, it's about 50-50. That means that all of you, uh, at least once, have a TempDB contention, or at least rings a bell, okay? This is some of those things that affect both the developers and the DBAs, okay? The developers, because sometimes they need to change the way they do the things, and the DBAs because they have to keep an eye on it, okay? So, 
But the, most important, the most important question, how many of you are working in Azure? Come on, just a little. Oh, okay. okay, my God. So. <laughs> Don't write your hands. <laughs> Two people will be enough, okay? <laughs> okay, so um, the, one of the important things in this session is that we also cover uh, Azure, okay? Because most of people think that Azure, e even him, think that uh, Azure is not affected about 10DB. So we have this kind of terms. Okay. Have you ever seen those kind of things? Yes? How many of you? It's just only to know what is. Raise your hand. You have to know. Okay. No, it's fine. It's all oh, OK. We That's great. Okay. Are you familiar with them? It's a bad thing to be familiar with them. We don't like to see it. Okay? It's supposed that we don't have to see it. Okay? So uh, we will see what means each kind of these things, okay? and we will try to, uh, to make it in the best way. So this is an interactive session. And uh, as we have said, uh, we are from support. So we are um, used to talk with the people. And for us, it's very boring to deliver a session and that nobody ask a question or say something. So please, feel free to interrupt us at any moment and ask a question or say something or whatever. For the, okay. reason, for the reason we discuss with our marketing people. And we have a special gift. That was a surprise. Yes, it's a surprise, but it's just only to motivate them. Okay? So we have several, so okay. depending on the we questions. We have some gifts. Okay. So we have some. But that was a surprise. Yes, I know. But it's just only to motivate them. Okay, so this is what <coughs> we are going to see during this session. First of all, we will go for allocation contention. It's the most popular one, uh, the one that um, most probably you have faced, at least one. And then we will go to the metadata contention or DDL contention. Do you know about these two ones? Raise your hand, the ones that have suffered any one of them or, or at least know about them. Okay. Allocation contention. It rings a bell to you or not? Yes? No? Rem remember that we have backpacks. <laughs> so yes or no? Yeah? No, OK. <laughs> and metadata contention? <laughs> no? OK. So let's talk in the, uh, at the beginning about allocation contention. OK? When does it happen? Well, it is very easy. When you create a lot of temporal objects in a concurrent way. If you only have a couple of sessions, and the user, uh, is, you, you have one user now, and the other user now, and the other user now, most probably you will never see that, OK? But once you have 20 people, 30 people, even with this small amount of people accessing concurrently to, to your databases, OK, most probably you will finally see allocation contention, OK? So yeah, it's very easy to say that, but let's go a little bit deeper. So first of all, if you don't do this, and this is very important, you will not see. But if you used to do repetitive creation and drops of temporary tables, okay, you most probably will see allocation contention. Okay? This has an exception. If you do it inside a store procedure and you don't make schema change, you will not see it. It doesn't matter how many tables you create at the same time, okay? Because SQL Server cache those temporary tables, okay? So once we have cached the temporary table, we don't need to create again. So we will not do this. Understood? Yes or not? Okay, but if you create it outside a store procedure or you do schema change inside or you do any change on the schema of the, of the table inside that store procedure or if you execute it with a SP execute or execute it in a dynamic way, you will face it. Tell me. Sometimes it happens. It depends 
on how you create and drop it and how you manage it. Okay? You, you know that we have different scopes for the temporary tables. So sometimes inside your store procedure, you don't uh, make any schema change, but in a store procedure that is about the scope of that procedure, you do it. Okay? And in that situation, you will remove the table from the cache, so you will need to recreate it. Okay? In fact, we have a case where we have this kind of situation, and it, it was uh, really difficult to, to troubleshoot it, because we said, okay, we should use the, the, the cache, but we are not using it. Okay? We, we have several queries to see if we are using the cache or not, and in this case, we were not using the cache. Okay? Good question but not enough for the back page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one, table variables that use tempdb for a storage. You know that you can create a table using a temp table or a variable table, okay? So in case you need to use tempdb for a storage, then you could face this issue also. Otherwise, you could face other kind of contention, like metadata contention, but not allocation contention. Fair one. Work with tables that are associated with cursors, mainly with insensitive cursors, because we create a temporary table underneath in order to manage that cursor. Okay, so cursors are dangerous in, in order to, uh, because we don't create directly the temporary table, but we create it indirectly because underneath we are creating it. Also, if you have work tables, your own tables, and you use their order by class. Most probably we will create, okay, depending on the indexes, but we will create the temporary table, okay, underneath again. And, of course, if you use group by classes, okay? And one of the worst things for us, because this one is an operator that we mm, really like it, but sometimes with hash, with hash plans, you also have a, uh, a creation of temporary table Okay, so it could affect also to the metadata contention. So, why is it so common? Because, as you can see, most of the time you will be doing these kind of things. Directly or indirectly, you will be working with temporary tables. Understood till here? Okay, so let me ask a question to you. Do you use these kind of things in Azure? Do you want to be in, to be in the um, backpack, right? Yeah, exactly. In Azure, I think that this does not happen. But you do these kind of things? Yes, yes, right. Then it will happen. Okay, so. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. So, because you know that Azure is the dark side, so most probably we don't have this option, but okay. I think that I have a demo. Something to, to you. bet? Your car or something like that? I don't know. We, we can discuss later. <laughs> okay, so why it occurs? Uh, because how we manage the allocation of the objects in the page on a data file. Okay, of 10 dB in this situation. How many of you know about PFS? Raise your hand. What is PFS? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot answer. <laughs> okay, so how many of you? Because I, I didn't see with, with the light. Can you raise your hand? Only one? I can't believe that. Okay, so what is PFS? Um, it's a map, but not a bit map. It's a byte map. It's a little bit different, but we will see it, okay? We call it PFS because it's page-free space. As you know, when we have a file, okay, we, in, in that file, we have several pages, okay? Each page in SQL Server is about eight, ki well, about, no, it's, eight kilobytes, okay? So we need to manage those pages, okay? We need to, to know which one of them are free so we can allocate an object there or which one are not free, okay? And inside SQL Server, I, I will not go so deeper unless you ask me, okay? But uh, we manage extents. Extents are group of eight pages. So we have 64 kilobytes, eight by eight, 64, okay, it's easy. <laughs> so uh, we manage those extents and those pages with that PFS. It's the one that will inform us. But we don't only use PFS, we, we also use 
other structures. So what we have in a file here is that the first page, those first HKs, okay, are for the header. We don't care right now about the header of that file. The first page is for the PFS, for that page free space. The number two is for GAM, Global Allocation Map. And this one is a bitmap, okay? The next one is Shared Global Allocation Map. And this one is also a bitmap. And then we have an allocation space. We are talking about data page, page where, where we allocate data itself, okay? Each page, eight kilobytes. But in a normal file, <coughs> whatever the file, whenever the file is above 64 megabytes, that means that almost all the files that you will have for 10db have different sections of PFS, okay? We have this one, we have this one, and here I only paste two, but we have more than two, okay? Later we will see how many of them do we have. So this is a normal structure for the file. So if you understood well, it's by performance. It's to improve the performance, to save yeah. data. Some, not, 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 not about performance. We have several PFS because of the, um, since it is a byte map instead mm -hmm. of a bitmap, it is related with the amount of page that we can manage. So for, okay. for example, if I need to add something or to update something, instead to go to read all the file, just only asking or review the, the details that we have in the PF1 and PS2, we have the options to know how many pages that we have free or not, right? This exactly. Is, okay. Exactly. And well, we, we don't go deeper, but we have mixed pages, we have single pages, so okay. this one will say, this one with these other two ones, will say us if we have all the extent occupied on, or, or just a, a part of that extent, if we have the eight kilobytes of a page occupied or only four kilobytes, for instance, of a page occupied on and so this on. This is GAM, okay? right? Yeah. Okay. It's like a, a note block in order to annotate the situation of each page. Understood this? Yes? So whenever I want to allocate something, I need to go to PFS, to GAM, and to SCAM. Okay? Okay, great. So if I want to allocate something, I will go for those ones. And if we have multiple sessions trying to allocate something, what will happen? Contention. Contention. Okay? Because we will have that PFS attending other requests. Okay? We will see it a little bit later. How can we diagnose it? Now we know why it happens. Okay? Now how we can diagnose? First of all, we will see that our performance is impacted. We will see that our queries run slower and slower and slower. And for instance, you will go to the CPU and you will see that the CPU is almost the same. It's not affected. It's not affected at all or not too much affected, okay? You will go to the memory and you will see that the memory is almost exactly the same. Uh, you will take a measure of your disk and you will see that, yeah, Sometimes we are using it a little bit more, but it's in a normal situation. And you will have bad performance. Some uh, queries that last about 25 milliseconds will start to last one second, two seconds, three seconds, even five seconds. And in the worst cases, even 25, 30 seconds. Okay? So it affects performance a lot. When you have that kind of situation, what have you looked for in order to see if you have allocation contention? Well, you will need to go to the weights, okay? If you have page latch weights, you will have contention. Most probably, you will have contention. You could have allocation contention or metadata contention. It depends on the specification of that kind of weight. Okay. Do you know what is page latch? Those ones that said that it's familiar. What is? Okay. May I answer the question? I have here, no. Oh. 
I have here a t-shirt. <laughs> this one will be for the first that explain me what is page latch, but in a good way. I think that it's what? right. What? The t-shirt? Will be related to the way the stats? A lit, at least. Wait a start. No. no. Which one? Nobody. It's a wonderful t-shirt. Yes, it's from Microsoft. It's very nice. <laughs> Don't you like it? Huh? Oh my god. Come on, the Acer guy, explain. <laughs> okay, what is a page latch? It's a latch that occurs on a page. <laughs> That's all. That means that we have a kind of lock on a page. Okay? You know that the files are divided on pages. Okay? So we have locked quote, okay? one of those pages, and I am waiting to that page to get unlocked. Okay? A latch is an internal way to lock something, okay? an internal way for SQL Server. It's not a lock because it's not for the whole transaction. It's just for that specific operation. Okay, so what we do is internally we say, hey, I am occupying this, you cannot use it, that is a lot, internal, okay? And then when we release it, we finish that way. So for, for, for the reasons it's very, very important when you have a performance problem, is try to review the way the stats. Okay, we have several dynamics management views that contains a lot of our string information, okay? You need to review internet to, to, to know what is that mean, Okay, but it's very important, this part of the, the weight stats. Yeah, so the other thing, the thing that are after the underscore, means what kind of lat we have taken, okay? Or what are we expecting of? If it is an app, it's an update, sh is a share, x exclusive, and so on. Okay, it's like the logs, but just for a page, for a specific page. So if we see these, that means that we are waiting for a, a, a resource that is a page to get uh, a game free. PFS is a page? Yes, it's the page number one of the file, okay? So it's a page. So if someone is acting on that PFS because it is updating something because we are creating or uh, updating a table, okay, a, a temp table, we will put a lot on that specific page, on the page number one that is the BFS, or on the GAM page, or on the SGAM page, okay? So we will see a page latch. And depending on the latch that we have put there, okay, we will see page latch up or page latch sure. SH. Or you will see later that we also have page latch underscore X, EX, okay? So the most common that you will see when we have allocation contention is the app and the share. Understood? Perfect. Next thing that you will see, that we have that page latch on one of these resources, okay? Two, X, one, two, what is the two? Database ID, who said database ID? Okay, uh, size? Remember this 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 t-shirt for me. Let me know if this size fits you. Okay. That one is the size. The second one. File. File. Yes. File. Too many answers. <laughs> and the last one is the page number exactly. Okay. So if we see the number one, we have the PFS. Okay. If we see the number three, we have this GAM. If we see the number two, we will, see, we, we will have the GAM. And if we have any multiplier of 80, 88, we will have, again, a PFS. We will explain it now, okay? But we will have, again, a contention on PFS. Okay? Understood? So, whenever you see this, it's because we have contention on 10 dB. And a possible question. What happens if we have a uh, 15 here, for instance? That means that we are having contention in another database. It's not TempDB contention, 
okay? But we can have allocation contention in other databases, okay? It's not something that only occurs on 10DB, but it's very, very rare to see it in other databases that are not 10DB, because 10DB, it's a system database. Yes, in okay. more, we saw this situation working with developers, and instead to create uh, data, uh, tables in the 10DB, they are using, they create temporal tables in the database. Okay, for the reason you could, you could see this type of weight stats. So. Exactly. Okay, but it's rare. Usually it is because of the developers. It's the dark, it's another dark side. Come okay, on. and usually it's because the requirements for that specific application that they are developing. So instead of using a normal temporary table that will create in TempDB, they create it but on their own database, okay? And if they have a lot of concurrent um, users, they will see also uh, allocation contention in that database. But the most common is for TempDB because it's a system database. We have only that database for all the databases in our instance, okay? Okay, so. For sure that in, in Azure, this is not a cure. For no, because of you only have one database, so. Yes. <laughs> well, you have managed instance. Yes. Yes, in managed instance it will happen. Okay. I, I bet know. you. So, how I can fix it? How I, can I prevent it? <coughs> you have there the solution. I think that we can do. Yes. About? About eight. About eight. Files. Well, I managed to increase the number of files to about 64, and you see the performance increment, and uh, you really see it. But there is a point uh, when increasing the number of files, it's not effective because you have the counterpart of managing that amount of files. Do you okay. know what is the reason that it's behind to create multi -fi multiple files? Do you know what is the reason? Uh, we have... Yes, but we, we, yeah. we will explain it, it a little bit. But yes, it works. It really works, okay? But it depends on why are you creating those temporary files, uh, how many processors do you have, okay? And you must to be sure that you are suffering allocation contention, not metadata contention. Because this is a solution for allocation contention. It doesn't affect at all to the metadata contention. Okay, if you suffer metadata contention, this will do nothing, absolutely nothing. How many CPUs okay. do you have on the 64 files? With 64 files, if it is correctly managed, okay, but above, for instance, uh, we have a customer that uh, start to experience platform uh, performance issues. Uh, with about 116 uh, files of, uh, of TempDB, okay? So depending on the, the, the problem that you have in the web stat. If you want to reduce this problem, create a new file, it's clear. But so us usually, usually, going above 64, for instance, if you have 64 logical cores, uh, it's not so recommended. We recommend <laughs> to increase the, the size of the files, or to check for other solutions, okay? Because you will start to have some issues managing those amount of files in the system. Okay? You, you, you need to combine this and also try to place the files in different drivers. Drives, no drivers. Okay. Drivers, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but it's, it's for, yes for the because reason depending on the For, for the instance, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the customer that I was talking about, okay, with 116 files, okay, all of them were located exactly in the same disk, and it was not an SSD, it was a normal disk, okay? So uh, we were reaching the limitation of the physical disk, okay? Because it, it, it was trying <laughs> to write <laughs> everything in the same place, okay? So we start to have a lot of problems because we have to bring those files to the memory, we, because SQL Server works on memory, okay? But the system, below us use the disk to bring the data to the memory. And they will start to face some issues, okay? And imagine the amount of memory that you need also to manage that, okay? So, first of all, 
this is the normal rule. This is the, the, the generic rule. If you are below eight logical cores, we are not talking about physical cores. We are talking about logical cores, okay? If you are below eight, till eight, okay? The recommendation is to put the same number of files as logical cores you have. That means if you have six logical cores, create six files for 10db, six data files for 10db. If you go to, to, to eight, then create eight. If you have 16 cores, our recommendation, generic recommendation, is to create eight um, 10db data files, okay? Only eight. If you see that you start to, uh, to have allocation contention, start to increase the number of files in number of four. I mean, if you have 16 logical cores, try with 12 uh, data files. If you uh, continue seeing allocation contention, go to the 16, okay? Do not go above 16 um, files if you have 16 cores, unless you don't have support behind you, okay? Because we usually don't recommend to have more files than cores, than, than logical cores, okay? We, we will look for a different solution. Is this understood? Yeah? Okay, perfect. So, let's explain why this works. This is a file. We have our first page, that is the PFS byte map, then since it is a byte map, we only have eight kilobytes is the size of a page, okay? That means that we will only be able to manage that amount of page because we use a byte, not a bit, okay? We use a byte. So we only manage that amount of page that are about 64 megabytes. So each 64 megabytes, or better said, each 8088 page, you will have another PFS page to manage the next 8088 page, okay? So our file will be divided, logically divided, in 8088 section page, okay? So this PFS will manage the allocation for the first 8088 page. The next PFS section will manage the allocation for the next 8088 page. Okay, why? Because since it is a byte map, in that my byte map, the first three by bits is for the free space that we have in that specific page, okay? The other one is if, if we have cost records or not, and so on, okay? The IAM page, if the, uh, we have allocated or not, if it is mixed or not. Is it okay or not? Yes? Okay. The next one that we have is the GAM page. And the GAM page and the SGAM page are bitmaps. So we have one bit per each page. That means that we can support here about four gigabytes of page. Okay? So usually, how many of you have a data file on TempDB larger than four gigabytes? One, two, three. Okay. But it's not so useful to have uh, files larger than four gigabytes. Most of the people use between two and four gigabytes of, for each uh, data file in TempDB, okay? So usually you will have only one page for GAM and one page for SGAM because you can afford the four gigabytes of that file with only that page. But if you have, for instance, eight gigabytes file, you will need two, okay? Two pages for GAM, two pages for SGAM. And it's not consecutive with the BFS because they manage barrier. Understood? Yep, okay. What happens when we have more files? Yes, we have more GAM, more GAMs, are more PFS. Let's see how it works. Yes, we have a teacher. <laughs> yes. The, at the beginning of our session, or when we start working in Microsoft, we ask the same question. What is the contention? A volunteer, we need a volunteer. We need a volunteer. 
One volunteer. Okay, over there we have a volunteer. <laughs> Can you come here, please? An applause to this volunteer, please. <laughs> I <Applause>. don't know. <laughs> okay, so so I'm going to to give this. He's a PFS. Okay, you know now as PFS, Mr. PFS. Okay. Okay. Please, could you please read how many great lines that we have? Please read me for for me this one. Could you please read this one, please? <laughs> come come on, read that one. So what have? Uh, okay. We have. See contention. You? Okay. okay, we are concurrently asking him to do something. He is the PFS, so he has contention. He has to say, hey, wait, 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 that is a lot. Shut up, let me read it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so okay. much. Let, let me, another thing, what happens if I give this one to this, to this, another PFS, 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 if you want to be another one? Just do it. So what happens if you need to create uh, objects or tables? You could decide, no, Juan? Or, or no, engine? No, you will not well, decide. Now decide. We, we will yes. show it. That but, but you will have someone else to ask for your request. Okay? Uh, if, if I see that this one has a lot, maybe I can go for this one. Okay? It don't work in that way. We will see how it works. Okay? But I have more ones. Okay? For the reason this is for the reason is the number of files of 10 dB. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank An applause so for the PFS thank you so much for everything. master. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so how it works? Well, it is something that is completely new, absolutely new, created by Microsoft. It's a round robin algorithm. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that means that we will start for this one. Okay. And we will put the first allocation there. Then we will go to the next one. Allocations two. Then we will go to, to the third one. And then to the next one. And hold on. Remember that we have concurrent. OK? So here we have four sessions that are trying to request exactly the same at the same time, okay? What happens if we have a fifth one? We should go to the first one, isn't it? Okay, so that's what happened in 2000, 2005, okay? Sorry? No, it is a round robin, so it will go again to the first one. So we also implement a round-robin algorithm inside the file between the PFS. So the fifth one will go to the PFS2 to give an allocation there. OK? And the next one will go there. And the next one will go there. And the next one will go there. So if we have more files, we will have more splitted the request. OK? And the larger the 10 PB, the larger quad, obviously. Okay, don't create a 20 gigabytes file because it is better, okay? Just if you use it, if you need it. But the larger the file it is, the more PFS sections we, do, we will have. So the more split it will be the request. Understood the mechanism? So that's why this is a good thing to solve the metadata, con the, sorry, the allocation mm -hmm. contention. See you how it works? So it works. Okay, we have a problem. Imagine that we only have these four sections. What will happen with the ninth? If now I have a, a ninth thread that is trying to request, where did it go? Here. And what is doing this one? Trying to allocate this one. So I will face a lot. Okay, so that's why we said that Depending on your request, we will need more files, we will need larger size, and so on. Understood? Okay? Always. This is not something magic. This is always depending on the customer, on that specific customer. So that's why sometimes a customer asks us, okay, I have 64 cores, I have 32 files, 
my files are each one of eight gigabytes, and I am experiencing allocation contention. Please don't tell me that I need to increase the number of files. First thing, we review what is causing that uh, allocation contention. Okay, before say, okay, you need to increase the number of files, we will take a look on it. Okay, because sometimes it is because we have something in the code, sorry developers, that is not working fine because you as a DBA has a good configuration. Okay, so we will check it because sometimes they claim about allocation contention and they are suffering metadata contention that you will see that is very, very similar in the symptoms. And also answering your question about the number of files, the TDB, etc. The TDB, the, alloca the allocation uh, contention is normal to have this. That the idea is try to reduce the time that you are waiting for. This is the, more, the, the idea. Because if you create more files, at the end it's not needed. So it's just the time that you are waiting for. Okay? If you are waiting for one second, okay, it could be possible. But if you could wait for, I don't know, 10 milliseconds, will be better in your performance. Okay? So. Okay. Questions here? No? Wow. I'm so good. <laughs> okay, so, well, th this should not appear now, but, okay, second way to, or the second thing that will help us to prevent it, okay? Enable the trace lag 1118. If we have uh, versions of SQL Server till included 2014, we need to enable this trace flag. And I said we need to. I didn't say it is recommended to. Okay, exactly. It's something that we have seen this is, that is a must. Or if you prefer because you are a rebel, okay, you can say is strongly recommended. Okay, but uh, it doesn't harm at all, and it is very useful for uh, avoid allocation contention. Why? Because most of the times the allocation contention is on SGAM. You can imagine why, because we only have one. Okay? PFS, since we have more than one, is less common, but SGAM is more common because we usually have one. What happened? That SGAM is mainly used when we have to allocate in um, mixed extent. That means that we are using all the space that we have in, in a bad way to say it, but just to explain. We, we need to, to use all the space in the page, okay? So we are marking if we can mix the page, if we have enough space, and so on. When we have this trace flag enabled, okay, instead of looking for mixed extents, we just, for each object, we give a new extent, an absolutely new extent. So we don't need to go to the SGAM to check for it. We just go to the PFS, create a new extent that is, remember, a group of eight pages, okay, for that specific object. So That's all. So you to the number of files and the space. Exactly, exactly. Okay, the, the, um, the best practices tell to you, the same that we have based in, in, the, in the first point, that create as much temporary files, uh, sorry, um, data files for the TMTB as logical course as you have, till eight, and above eight, stay on eight. If you see contention, uh, contention then increase in number of four, okay? And this is for sure, if you are under 2016, I mean, till 2014 included, enable this trace flag. It's a startup trace flag, and it doesn't harm at all, okay? And it's much more benefit. The other trace flag that we recommend is the 1117. Okay. Uh, the other one is not harmful, so it's a must. This one, it depends with the DBA you face, okay? Because this one, what this one does is to increase or um, the, 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 the size of the files, of the 10 DB files, or of the data files, 
in the same amount. I mean, if you have four files for a database and you have a two gigabyte file and you want to increase because in this, one, this file is almost full, okay, you will need to make that file grow, okay? So if you grow for three gigabytes, this file will be in three gigabytes, this in two, and this in two. The 117, what does is that if this file increase to, increase to three gigabytes, it also uh, do the same in the rest data files. So all the files increase in the same size. Okay? Okay. So that is something that is a must for TempDB. It's a must. Because imagine, or, uh, sorry, imagine that these files have different size. Okay? The round robin method don't consider if you have free space or not. It will do a round robin. Okay? So you must have the same size in all the TempDB files. Otherwise, you will create with that configuration metadata contention. Okay or not? But this trace flag affects all the databases. And it's true that some um, DBAs prefer to assign by their own the size of the rest of the files for the rest of the databases. Okay? So if you are one of the, data, of the DBAs that don't like this trace flag, okay, don't enable it. But provide for 10 dB enough space in all the files, the same space. Understood? Yep. yep. Okay. Please see if this happened in Azure. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate that it's not happening in Azure. It's not happening in Azure. Okay. By the way, what do you think? Does it happen in Azure that is a managed database or not? It's supposed that Microsoft should provide the best for you. Not okay. Moving. Okay. So Let, nice. Let's make yeah, just to uh, to say a tip. Uh, we say till 2014. What happened in 2016? Exactly. It's the behavior by, the, by default. So you don't need to enable the trace flag 1118 because it's the behavior for the by default. Okay. So what do you imagine that we have on Azure? Exactly. Exactly. So it will happen by default in Azure that this trace flag is like it is enabled. Okay? So we will have that allocation by extent. Okay or not? And if we create the configuration because we are the ones that provide you the database, what do you think? That you will have only one TMDB file or we will have several TMDB files? And in Azure? Okay. And in Azure? What do you think in Azure? Do we have several temporary files or not? We should have. We should have. Okay, take a t-shirt for you. Uh, what is the reason? Because it's a, it's a system that we are managed. So do you think what is the reason that we have temporary files? In, it's normal because in the end, it's a SQL server, right? The only thing, the only thing that we have uh, right now, we have. Uh, I don't know if you uh, if you can see. I'm connecting right now to three servers. One of them is managed instance. Another one is SQL Azure. Another one is my environment, my public, uh, my own environment. Don't cheat. Go to this one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to click here. Okay, so yes. now imagine this situation. How many cores? Do you have in Azure? It depends. You don't have cores. You have a database. You don't have a server. You have a database and did use. In case you could have virtual cores, okay? But we don't talk about cores when we are talking about database, okay? Because you only have database. Different thing in some way occurs when we have managed instance. 
But when we are talking about Azure SQL database, that is only a database, we don't talk about cores. So let's see what happens. Yes, uh, right now we have a standard too. Okay, it's a uh, 50, uh, 50 DTUs. Um, right now, it's uh, this is the number. Most, most probably, you know, every uh, 100, it's one core in, in standard. Okay, so in this situation, I'm going to run this file, and what is the surprise? One second, is this one? Sorry, yes, yes. Sorry, one second, because I think that I choose another one. So one well, meanwhile. Mm -hmm. It happens, okay? They have TempDB contention. Why? Because we said that we create one data file per logical core. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, so if they only have this is the one core, what happened? Yes. We will only use one file, okay? So we can create allocation contention in HRDB. It's not an easy us in on-premise, but we can do it, okay? Because at the end, we have a SQL server there, okay? What happened in SQL Azure if mm. you have metadata contention? Sorry, allocation contention. Because yeah, you, have, you have not access mm -hmm. to the server, so you cannot create more files, isn't it? Which is the way to create more files to have more cores? I have the solution for you. Just so to increase the database tier. Exactly. Okay? You need to go to the next one. Yes. If I click here in the pricing tier. You have to change the pricing class. Yes. Exactly. 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 I mean, you need to pay more. <laughs> yes, but it's depending, it's depending <laughs> of your work. So you will close. So, so you, can, uh, you can imagine one that your database. Can, can you working? show the contention? Yeah. Yes. It works? Yep. Okay. So it, it, it's an easy, as easy as. Okay, if you have a workload that costs this, please mm -hmm. go to a better plan because you need more powerful. Okay? It's almost like that. The other situation, try to avoid to create so many uh, temporary tables in a concurrent way. Okay? Avoid the use of cursors, avoid the use of or the buy, avoid the creation, the, the, the temporary table creation. What you have to do, and this is for the developers, sometimes we will need, in these kind of cases, if we see that we have done everything that is recommended, and we still see uh, allocation contention, what is recommended is to change temporary tables for variable tables, okay? So instead to use the, the, the number path, you will use the at symbol in order to create a variable. The variable will not create the allocation contention unless we use the storage on TempDB. Okay? But you need to know there that there are differences between the variables that are tables and the temporary tables. About indexes, about the statistics, about the search, about the views, about the scope, and so on. So you need to evaluate it. Okay? But sometimes the only solutions that we have is to change the temporary tables by variables that are temp tables, okay? What happened then? What, what are you showing? Okay. What happened is that we will show this. And what is this? Is that a multiply of uh, 8088? No. Is this a uh, oop? Or S8, the normal one? No. So what we have here is metadata contention. That is a little bit different. We see page latch, but since this is okay, is on TempDB, this situation is on the first file, but this is not the page one, the page two, the page three, and it is not a multiple of uh, 8088. And obviously, it is not a multiple of the four gigabyte stand that we can use with the SCAM. So that means that that it is a metadata contention, okay? DDL contention. Is it okay? Tell yeah. me. Yes, yes, one second. Yeah. 
the database this ID. One. This one. Why? Yeah. Because this is the one that is trying to access. And the resource wh where it's waiting is this one. This is the wait resource, and this is the database that we ex where we execute. OK? OK. So please, switch, because we have only yeah. five minutes, and I uh, at least a tip for the Wow, well, time flies. Okay, so do, do you understand it? Yep. OK. What happened when we have? What have you done? Nothing. Just so I have not. OK. Start it here. Yes. Uh, here. Forget about it. This here. 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 Wait. OK. So what happened with metadata contention? Metadata contention is slightly different, OK? Instead of having the lots, of having the, the, the log situation in a page, we have it in an object, OK? In a system object, uh, specifically in the objects that track the temporary tables. Okay, that track temp tables. Okay, so imagine that now that we have an object and we need to access to that object in order to say, hey, create this and manage this and update this and update a record like this. Okay, so what will happen? That we will try to engage that object concurrently. Okay, and the object said to us, okay, hold on, wait. I am busy doing this other stuff, inserting the Latin, or for instance, if we have the garbage collector, okay, and we need to drop all of the cash because we stopped using that kind of temporary tables or variable tables, okay, we will need to wait till that object finish to do that, okay or not? Okay, so uh, in this situation, we have. Um, a more difficult solution. Imagine, this is what we do, okay, with all the system objects. In this case, I have, uh, later you, you, can, you will see a, a query where you can find how to look which kind of objects are the ones that are locked, but are system objects. And you can see page latch, but in this situation, we will have exclusive page latch, the EX, and also shared. And the most important, the page will not be one, two, three, and will not be a multiple of 8088, okay? So this is how to this is how you can see it, okay? And you can see this. If you see this in the performance monitor, you will realize also that you have metadata contention. How we can fix, sorry to, to go so fast, but how we can fix it? Well, it's not an easy, <laughs> okay? It's not an easy. This is the first one. Minimize the creation destructions of user objects. That means mainly uh, tables, temporary tables. In some situation, also table variables. You need to try to cache it as most as possible. And you need to try to reduce the usage that you uh, make of it, okay? And the other one is to upgrade to SQL Server 2017. Why? Because we have changed a lot the way we manage these objects. Okay? This is not for selling. Okay? This is for real. Because when we have these kind of situations, it's really difficult to analyze something in the code to prevent it. Uh, just as an example, the last case, I had in a very large customer with metadata contention, we, had, we, we spent about three months going through all the storage procedures and all the situations when they go to uh, the metadata contention. This is a mistake, it's metadata contention. Okay, so it's difficult. If you, um, if you try to do it in a good way from the very beginning, you will not face these kind of situations. But if you just use temporary tables, because it's the easy way, and 
then you realize that in one year, you will have 20,000 customers going to your web page, for instance, in a concurrent way, you will have problems because then you will need to change everything. What happened in 2017? Just for go to in a, in a different way. We have changed the process from synchronous to asynchronous. So now we don't need to wait till the object say to us, hey, it is okay, I have it. No, we continue doing the things, okay? And when the object have done what we have request, we have the asynchronous answer, so we don't stop there. We don't get blocked there, okay? The second thing that we have done, we have only used one per NUMA. So this reduces the amount of request a lot, a lot, okay? It's a pity you don't have enough time to, to explain this because this one is very interesting. But most probably the one that is uh, the best change that we have done to the algorithm is this one, okay? Is when we acquire the lock or the, the latch in this case. When we go to the garbage collector, we do this, okay? And we take the page like exclusive, all the time we are looking for something to remove. So we are locked there because we have a latch. During all the buku, we have a latch. In the new algorithm, we only take the exclusive when we need to remove it. Otherwise, we will have a share so other processes can continue accessing that page. Okay? And this increase the speed a lot. For instance, in this customer that I was talking about, okay, that we spent three months reviewing all the sort of procedures, it was so expensive to change the code that they decided to move to 2017. All the problems finished. So it, it's not a joke. It's something that we have those three major changes in the algorithm and the metadata contention was almost solved in that kind of situation. You need to, 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 ha to keep in mind that if you have always on, if you have um, a query store, if you have encryption, all that kind of things use this kind of objects, okay? So it will increase the probability of suffer metadata contention. Okay? Yep. Understood? Everything understood? Okay, so one question. If you answer correctly, we will give a backpack, okay? If you don't answer correctly, we will not give you a backpack. So uh, how do I know if I have metadata contention or allocation contention? Okay, who said the first, the page number? <laughs> okay. Oh, whoops. And okay, you said the uh, the page latch. Yeah. Which kind of page latch is for metadata? Yeah. Ex and sh. And for allocation condition? Okay, one for you and one for you. Applause, please. <laughs> okay. So thank you for attending this session. Thank you for support us till the end of the session. Mm -hmm. And if you have any question, you can ask us now. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you.